and uh, Alison, and to the musicians, of course, who are absolutely brilliant. Uh, I say that because one of them is my daughter, and one of them is my grand great grandson in law. Not sure about Andrew where he fits in the picture. Can I also say a word in anticipation of thanks to the guys at the back? Because we have a PowerPoint presentation tonight, and uh, they're going to work it splendidly. I know I'm just looking, they're not looking at me, but they are. They're smiling at me, so everything's fine. Can I just reinforce the welcome that Dave, David gave? Uh, it's lovely to see you here tonight. Thank you for coming. I know there are some strangers, or visitors rather, amongst us. To you, a very special welcome. I want tonight to just read three very short passages from God's Word with you. I think about 12 verses in total, but the first one is in Luke's Gospel and chapter 13, please. Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. I'm reading verses 23, 24, and 25. Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 23, 24, and 25. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he, Jesus, said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and will not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Just on over in Luke's gospel, please. Chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 39. To verse 43, please. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, commencing our reading at verse 39, a very familiar passage with you. And one of the malefactors, one of the thieves, which were hanged, reeled on him and said, if thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and in we indeed justly? For we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And finally, please, thank you for your patience. The Gospel of John chapter 14 and verses 1 to 6, please. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, please. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. 
Thomas says unto him, Lord, Lord, we know not whether thy goest. And watch the next six words, please. How can we know the way? How can we know the way? Jesus, verse 6, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And we pray that God will bless his word to us. A word of prayer, please, just before we look together at the verses. Father God, we thank you for these three lovely passages that we've read together. In fact, they, they thrill our hearts, and the more we're going to look at them this evening, it's our prayer that will just thrill all of our hearts at what we see the Lord Jesus Christ do and hear him say things. So, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit may just surround us at this very moment in time as we spend the last minutes of this gathering together. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the theme for my talk with you this evening is the pathway to heaven. Ah, brilliant. Okay. You will have noticed very carefully from John chapter 14 that we've just read. You will have noticed that the person who asked the six-word question was a guy called Thomas. Now, I googled Thomas just the other day. And page after page after page after page on Google just kept reaming out and every one of them had this thing to say about Thomas. Thomas, you're an absolute doubter. Why won't you ever believe what the Lord says to you, Thomas? Why are you always doubting? I personally love the way the Lord deals with Thomas. He's a lovely guy, and it's lovely the way the Lord deals with him. Later away in John chapter 20, Thomas is not at a meeting that he should be at. Jesus is there, but Thomas is not. And Thomas says to the other ones who say to him, look, the Lord's been here. We have met with the Lord last week when you weren't here. And Thomas says, look, unless I can put my fingers into the nail prints, unless I can put my fist into the side of him, I'm not going to believe. I'm a doubter. I'm a total doubter, said Thomas. I love the Word of God because it takes the very extreme and presents it to you and to me. There is no greater person either on Google or in the Word of God or across the world that is a greater doubter than this man called Thomas. Thomas said, Lord, how can we know the way? So I'm going to share with you from John 14, I'm going to show you how the pathway was opened. There are four beautiful things in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 6, which you know off by heart but I'm going to reinforce them to you tonight. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. Let me look at the first one with you. Jesus said, I am the way. Yeah. Yes? It won't come. Okay. Let me explain firstly what Jesus is saying to Thomas. Thomas, 
I'm the way. You want to get to heaven someday, Thomas? You want to see God face to face someday, Thomas? I want to explain to you, Thomas, the first thing about opening up the way. I'm that way. Thomas, I am the way. I'm not going to give you a lecture on theology, Thomas. I'm not going to take you through a whole lot of studies and, bio, uh, and theories. Thomas, I want you to look straight into my face, says Jesus. I want you to look straight into my eyes as I'm looking into your eyes. And Thomas, I want to say this to you. You want to know the way to heaven? Catch it clearly, Thomas. I, I'm the way. Thomas, Thomas, dear doubting Thomas, please understand clearly that I am the way to heaven. Nothing else, no one else, no other concept, no other religion, no other culture. Thomas, Doubting Thomas, let me reinforce this to you as I open up the pathway to heaven. Thomas, look me straight in the face, Thomas. I, I, Thomas, am the way. Secondly, Jesus said to Thomas, I am the truth. Please try and picture with my fertile imagination. Try to picture, please, this guy Thomas standing looking in the face of Jesus Christ. The whole dialogue, I'm sure, is not recorded here in John 14, but let me read you into it just a little bit. Thomas, how long have you been with me walking on this earth? Lord, three and a half years. Thomas, let me ask you a blunt, personal, direct, individual question. Thomas, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard me tell a lie to anybody? Anybody? Thomas, listen to me, Thomas. Have you ever heard me tell a lie to anybody? Thomas, I'm not only the way to heaven, but I'm the truth. What I'm telling you, Thomas, face to face, eyeball to eyeball. I'm the truth, Thomas. Look at me, Thomas. You've seen me work with people. You've seen what I've done with people. You've heard my lectures. You've heard my talks. You've heard my speeches. Thomas, I have never told a lie. I'm the truth, Thomas. And when I tell you I'm the way, Thomas, I am the way. Thirdly, Jesus said to him, Thomas, I'm not only the truth, I'm not only the way, but I'm the life. Thomas, I'm the life. And this is something that everybody, including you, in Kilkeel Baptist Church need to gather tonight, this last bit, this third bit. Jesus says to Thomas, Eyeball to eyeball, I am the life. Thomas, you have seen me. You have seen me heal the sick people. Thomas, you have seen me give sight to the blind. Thomas, you have seen me lift the lame and cause them to walk. Nothing, Thomas, nothing, Thomas, is outside my ability to give life to everyone. Thomas, I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. 
And you can probably, if you're following closely with me, you are probably getting the thrust of what Jesus is trying to hammer home to this doubting man, Thomas. He then says, fourthly, John 14, verse 6, Thomas, dear doubting Thomas, catch my last words to you, Thomas, please. No man, for no no abstractions here, no man cometh to the Father. Now, here's the three words, but by me. Please, please rivet those three words. I'll tell you what to do. Engrave them on your heart. Embed them into your DNA. These are the three life-changing words across the world. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. My Bible. Everywhere I go with my Bible, those three words go with me from John 14, verse 6. But by me. You want to be a preacher? You want to share God's gospel with your workmates, your classmates, your colleagues, your family? Dear sir, in this gathering, I implore you to take into your heart those last three words. But by me. There are no other options. Neil and and I are very privileged in many, many ways. One of the ways is that, that we have lovely Hindus who are friends of ours. Lovely people. Lovely, lovely people. We have lovely Muslims who are friends of ours, lovely people. We have Jehovah Witnesses who are friends of ours. On Wednesday past, up Newry Street in a little place called Brooklands, there were 22 people sitting when Nell and I conducted a service. Nine of those 22 people were all Roman Catholics. Now, here's a common factor in it all. Here's a common factor. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Well, hallelujah for that. You cannot be saved. You cannot go to heaven. The pathway to heaven is opened. And the only one who holds the key to heaven and its opening is Jesus Christ. I am the way. Thomas, you're doubting, I know. I'm the way. Thomas, I'm the truth. Thomas, I'm the life, and no one comes to the Father. Thomas, not even you, comes to the Father but by me. Can you see the way opened? Can you see the pathway to heaven beautifully, simply, clearly, personally, individually shown to you? I am the way, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father. Thomas, no one comes to the Father but by me. The way opened. Let me take you back just a little bit into Luke 23, please. The second passage that we read together. And I want to share with you I want to share with you the pathway found. I use this illustration quite often because the Lord Jesus Christ is right in the center of this one. Luke 23. There are two threes either side of Jesus Christ on the cross. And the first thing we find is that here's a man and he takes four steps on the pathway to heaven. 
Now let me slow down for just one minute and say to you in this gathering tonight, three of those steps you can take tonight. The fourth one, it's for a future day. But there are three steps that if you ever want to get really into heaven, no fudging, no disparity about it, if you actually want to get into heaven, there are three fundamental, basic truths that you need to walk. And they're all here in Luke chapter 23. The first is this. The thief owns up. This is, this is what the thief says in Luke 23, and he says these marvelous words. He said, I receive the due reward of my deeds. Now, please, sitting in Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle tonight, please do not overlook or do not miss those significant words. We call it, preachers call it repentance. I call it owning up. This thief is nailed to the cross, the same as Jesus. Hands and feet nailed to the cross. He is there because of the foul life that he led here on earth. And he has come to this very precise moment now where in front of the Lord Jesus Christ and anybody else who listens, he owns up. I receive. I'm here. I'm being crucified. I receive the due rewards of what I have done. Now, if ever you're going to be saved, and I'm not making any assumptions about anybody in this gathering, if ever you want to be saved and be sure of getting to heaven, you must and I must take that step. Now, I know it's not a step that's preached upon very often, but... I've got to reinforce it because you can't go to step two or three or four until you get over step one. And step one is owning up. You see, if you're not prepared to tell the Lord Jesus Christ about your past, and if you're not prepared to confess it to him and let him deal with it, and let him cleanse it by the shedding of his own blood, there is no pathway to salvation for you or me. I wish I could stress this with even greater strength to you. Because the next two steps are beautiful. They are absolutely astoundingly beautiful. But I don't lead you to step two and three and four until I get riveted into your mind and into your heart, step one. If you're going to get on the pathway to heaven, you need to acknowledge before a holy God that you are not worthy of heaven, that your lifestyle and your life habit is not in conducive ways with Christ. Now, let me try and look at all your faces at one time. Impossible, but I'm going to try and do it. If you haven't got on the first step, you're not saved. May I say that again for you? If you have not taken the first step, there's no sense saying, Ronnie, I've taken steps two and three. Because you can't if you haven't taken step one. The Lord demands, yeah, demands, that we own up to the past. 
and commit our lives totally, totally in confession to him. Secondly, the thief not only owned up, but he spoke up. I think this is lovely, and this is the second bit. The thief in Luke 23, he then said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Folk in Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle, those are the most amazing words probably in the whole of the Bible, coming from a human being. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 says this. The end of the verse says these words, Thou shalt be saved. But Paul lays down two conditions for you being saved. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Folk, come with me for two seconds, two minutes. Come with me right into the very courtrooms of heaven, just in your mind and in your soul for two minutes. There are seven billion people across the world in this, the 7th of February, 2016. There are seven billion approximately people. How does God design a salvation, a pathway to salvation for seven billion people that doesn't exclude one or the other? He does it beautifully and majestically. Do you know what he does? He gives every man and woman a mouth and a heart. Those are the only two ingredients. Those are the only two things. Look at me, please. Those are the only two things you need to be saved. Listen to the lovely Apostle Paul. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, what does this man in Luke 23 on the cross says? He said, Lord, you get it? Lord, he can't move his hands, he can't move his feet, but he uses one of the two gifts that God has given to him, and he uses his mouth to say, Lord. The other thief must have heard him. Don't know why his mother and father were there or not. I'm sure they may have heard as well. But he used his mouth. Secondly, he used his heart. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now pause, pause deliberately for a moment. Jesus is kneeled to a cross. His feet are kneeled to the cross. Yet this thief beside him, this thief beside him believes that Jesus is going to die, rise again from the dead, and establish his eternal kingdom. Well, what about that? It's not brilliant. And Paul says, look, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God shall raise him from the dead, you shall be saved. So the pathway's being found. One, he owns up. Secondly, he speaks up. Thirdly, he looks up. And fourthly, because of time, he goes up. 
Wow, hey. He goes up. Those of you in the congregation who are either part of my family or know me quite well, they know that I have a phobia about TV adverts. I love television adverts. Carnation Street, Ammerdale, and all of that other stuff, it's only there to fill up the time in between the adverts. You, you know that. Eddie, you know that, don't you? That it's only there. Carnation Street, Carnation Street is only there to fill up the gap between the adverts. And one of the adverts that I dearly, dearly love, it's where the guy has a tin of paint in his hand. And he goes, setting it down on the desk or the floor. Sticks his chest out and he goes, it does exactly what it says on the tin. And of course, I spiritualize that. And I say this with great joy and delight to you. Jesus says, I do exactly what I say in the Bible. And it's not a five-year guarantee like Ron said. It's an eternal guarantee. The pathway opened. The pathway found. Thirdly, the pathway missed. The other thief on the other side of the cross, the other thief. Firstly, he won't own up. He says, if you're the Christ, come on down from the cross and save yourself and save us. All he was interested in was the worldly goods and the situations that he had not interested in repentance, not interested in owning up. The second thief won't own up. Secondly, he won't speak up. No way is he going to talk to the Lord about salvation. Thirdly, he won't look up at the Lord and his coming again into his kingdom. And finally, the way is missed. The pathway is missed by this other man. And he won't go up. He won't go up. Let me conclude. The pathway opened. The pathway found, the pathway missed, finally the pathway closed. In Luke 13, I read these words with you earlier. The question was asked of Jesus, are there few that be saved? And here's what verse 25 of Luke 13 says. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut to the door. Let me say very clearly to you, because you're important. There will come a day whenever the Lord Jesus will rise from his throne beside his Father. And the pathway, the gateway, the doorway to heaven and salvation. He will shut it. He will shut it. He will shut it. 
when once the master of the house has risen up and shut to the door. Now watch the next words, please. You say, verse 25, Lord, Lord, open to us. Lord, open to me. But the door's shut. The gateway's closed. So what does the Lord say in response to the request? He said, I never, ever, ever knew you. I never, ever, ever knew you. Let me close before we sing our final hymn. In John's Gospel, chapter 20, Jesus is standing, looking again into the face of this renowned doubter, Thomas. He's looking squarely into whatever color of eyes he has. Thomas has learned the pathway to salvation and heaven. He's learned it. He's come to Christ fully and truly and honestly and personally. And Jesus looked down and says, Thomas, blessed are you because you have believed because you've seen. More blessed are those who have not seen, have yet believed. And that's Kilkee Baptist Tabernacle, 7th of February, 2016, and you're sitting listening to this message. You haven't seen Christ face to face, but the offer is still there for you. A pathway opened, found by one, missed by another, shut and closed by him. Father, bless your word to all of us. May your Holy Spirit just take it and fill it into our thinking and into our feelings that we in this fellowship, in this church tonight, all of us without exception, may follow the pathway to heaven and salvation personally. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.